I am going to show you how to get better renders with Eevee. I have been using Eevee in almost all of my projects. That is because Eevee is designed for real-time rendering and is optimized for interactivity and fast viewport performance. It's ideal for creating animations and visualizations that require a quick feedback loop, or for use in gaming and virtual reality applications. Eevee is capable of producing high-quality results with a relatively low computational cost, making it a good choice for projects with limited computing resources. I prepared this scene for the purposes of demonstration. There is only one collection that contains the speaker components. These two are instances of the main speaker collection. The purpose of instancing a collection is to allow more geometry in the result, without duplicating the actual data. If I select any object from the main speaker, you can see it affects the instances as well. If you want to instance, go to the collection, right-click, then go to Instance to Scene. You can move it to anywhere you want in the scene. If you go to Object Data Properties of the instance, you can reduce the size of the empty object. You can even change how you want the empty object to be displayed. Now you have known how to instance a collection, let me delete this instance. If you enable Material Preview you can see that these objects are indeed textured. Using high quality textures is the first step into getting better visuals in Eevee. If you want this blend file in order to follow along, it is available on my Gumroad page for free. There is a link in the description. It's time for lighting this scene. I am going to use the three-point lighting setup. I usually use the animation workspace to do lighting. On the outliner, create a new collection, then rename it to, Camera and Lights. When the collection is still selected, add a camera into the scene. On this left area, switch into Camera View. Bring in this side panel, enable Camera to View. That allows you to zoom and pan around when in Camera View. On this right view, the camera is too big in the scene, so I will scale it down this way. After finding a nice camera view, you disable camera to view, so that you don't accidentally ruin the view. When camera and lights collection is selected, add an area light. On this left area, change viewport shading to rendered. On the object data properties of the light, reduce size to 5 cm. I'll also increase power to 2 watts. You can see the light is not at the right place. Move this light this way. This is going to be the key light. I want this light to point the speakers in the scene. To do that, you press Shift T. On this left area, you can see that there is a problem with shadows. To fix that, enable contact shadows on the light. The next step is to go to render properties, then enable ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. Expand shadows, enable high bit depth, then change cube size to 1024 pixels. While in top orthographic view, duplicate this light and bring it to this side. This is going to be the fill light. If you press Shift T again, you can be able to point the light to the main objects in the scene. On its object data properties, set power to 1 watt, and then increase size to 30 centimeters. Let me adjust the power to 2 watts. Add in a point light, and then reduce its radius to 5 centimeters. This point light is now the backlight. Increase power to 1 watt, then change color of the light. While in top orthographic view, you can move the light closer to the objects. Enable contact shadows for this light. In perspective view, move the light up this way. Go to render properties, then enable bloom. If you pan around in camera view, you can see the effects of bloom. When camera and lights collection is selected, go to add, light probe, irradiance volume. The irradiance volume is too big, it has to be reduced. On scale, set X and Y to be 0.7. On Z, set it to be 0.2. Align the irradiance volume this way so that it covers the whole scene. Go to the object data properties of the irradiance volume. Set resolution X and Y to 8, then on Z, set it to 3. 
Go to Add Once More, Light Probe, then Reflection Cube Map. Move it to the middle of the scene. As you can see the Reflection Cube Map is too big. Reduce its radius to 1 cm. Go to Render Properties, move to Indirect Lighting and expand it. Select Bake Indirect Lighting. After baking the indirect lighting, I realized that the irradiance volume is not covering the speakers properly. Select it and move it along the Z-axis this way. Delete lighting cache, then bake indirect lighting once more. I have just shown you how to get better renders with Eevee. If you want to check out how I made this animation in Blender and After Effects, then click on this video.